So today in series of topics scale interviews we have with us Dr. Abhay Nene he's from Bombay and he's a spine specialist so thank you doctor for this interview Most welcome. so welcome more than happy to be here so shall we start sure so my first question what are spinal fractures causes and symptoms so spinal fractures as the word sounds are uh, very deadly injuries that happen to the central column which supports your body so unlike peripheral fractures and long bones the these are uh, these injuries are a cause of a huge handicap to the patient because the patient gets bedridden the uh, source of fractures are essentially two one is road traffic accidents which is quite common in the urban settings that you and me live in uh, the other of course is um, osteoporotic vertebral fractures which happens to elderly people and even that crop is now growing because we got more and more older people living a healthier life and uh, so we have half and half being in a, a situation where uh, there's so much traffic and such bad uh, control of uh, vehicles we have these uh, bad road traffic accidents where young um, bread winning uh, you know young people from families suffer from fractures and that can lead to paraplegia which can you know be a lifelong event versus these older people who need uh, to be independent they get bed bound because of um, minor falls or minor injuries so spinal fractures is a huge problem in our community okay so how is spinal fracture diagnosed and treated um, actually pain is so overwhelming that uh, the diagnosis of spinal fracture comes in uh, even on phone if you just give a correct history and uh, you know that the you know the pain is of that level uh, it's not a covert injury it's a very overt injury so either there'll be a significant traffic injury like a you know some biker has been knocked down or uh, down south you have people who climb up trees to you know for coconut trees and they fall in in our side during holy people jump into um, shallow pools and they fracture their necks so either there's a huge incident that comes behind it uh, the slightly more difficult ones to diagnose are the osteoporotic fractures these are the elderly people who fracture their bones because their bones are weak it's not because of the injury so this injury could be something as simple as uh, bending down to tie your shoes or your car going over a speed breaker so it's a very minor minuscule injury but the fracture caves in um, because the bone is weak rather than the injury okay so heading towards our next question what is spinal infection and its types so you've touched the other big problem in our country because uh, as big as spinal fractures is spinal infection and uh, unfortunately our country is the powerhouse of spinal tuberculosis and uh, spinal tuberculosis goes hand in hand with spinal infection in the Indian subcontinent uh, having said that there are other causes of spinal infection uh, like non tuberculous infection which happens in uh, more immunocompromised people like uh, high diabetics or uh, people who had some procedure and a third batch which is post operative spinal infection which uh, worldwide has a 2% uh, incidence rate, rate after any spinal surgery so that's not a such a big challenge as spinal tb is spinal tuberculosis happens uh, because we are all exposed to tuberculosis as children in our country because it's endemic to our country and uh, any immune compromise on our part which could be related to poor nutrition dieting uh, stress high diabetes uh, anything that relates to pull your immuno uh, immune immune status down that reactivates this tuberculosis that's lying within you and uh, one of the commoner osteoarticular areas so one of the commonest areas uh, where the bone is affected in tb seems to be the spine okay so what is the most common infection spinal tuberculosis infection? hands down being in india uh, out of every 10 spine infections you see nine would be spinal tuberculosis but the story doesn't end there spinal tuberculosis now converted itself to a drug resistant form which is a menace in our society because it can't be diagnosed and it uh, masquerades as tuberculosis but actually the bug is resistant to the uh, to the drugs that we give and it pulls the carpet under our feet okay so risk factor of spinal infection and treatment so risk factor is what i said if your immune status is compromised uh, you're likely to suffer from spinal infection so um, everything right, right from stress to lack of sleep to poor nutrition uh, bad dietary habits uh, to high diabetes of course hiv lot of smoking alcohol which uh, puts your immune system to challenge uh, that can cause spinal infection uh, otherwise we see it in people who have a chronic renal failure chronic liver failure so people who are diseased and uh, diagnosis i mean uh, treatment hinges around diagnosis if you can diagnose this correctly 
treatment is a no-brainer. The challenge is getting the diagnosis right. And uh, here I would like to, uh, you know, uh, assert that putting in the needle and taking a piece of uh, the sample out, doing a biopsy, is the only way to diagnose a spinal infection and it should not be diagnosed based on speculation and conjecture. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, my last question, uh, like any key message you would like to share with our Doplexus community? Just keep on uh, being on Doplexus. It's like a fun <laughs> place and uh, we can interact here. And uh, if we don't pitch in, uh, we won't be doing a great service to ourselves. So thank you for having me over, Doplexus. Okay, thank you for your insightful discussion.